Welcome! This video will guide you through disassembly, repair, and reassembly of the Viking Pump mechanically sealed general purpose internal gear pump. This series includes the following Viking Pump models. As always, consult the applicable technical service manual for important safety information before you begin. A copy of the latest revision can be found on our website at vikingpump.com. You may require the following tools for disassembly and repair. SAE wrenches, SAE Allen wrenches, feeler gauges, and a soft-headed hammer. A complete listing of tools and part numbers can be found in the service manual. For newer pumps, seal kit and repair kit part numbers can be found on a hang tag on the pump. For older pumps, or if the tag has been removed, contact your local authorized Viking pump distributor with the model and serial number of the pump to obtain these part kit numbers. The seal kit includes a replacement mechanical seal, head gaskets, installation tools, and associated hardware. The repair kit includes a replacement idler and bushing assembly, head and pin assembly, and associated hardware. Take care when opening the kit so as not to cut or damage these repair parts. Keep the pump and work area as clean as possible. Drain the pump of any residual liquid. Turning the shaft will help expel any liquid trapped in the gear teeth. Mark the head and casing before disassembly to ensure proper reassembly. Remove the head cap screws. Note that G-size pumps may require removal of the relief valve to access these cap screws. Remove the head by tilting it backward to prevent the idler from falling off the idler pin. Be careful not to damage the head gaskets when removing the head. All of these gaskets are required to maintain the proper end clearance when reassembling the pump. Loosen the cap screws and remove the end cap to expose the mechanical seal. Remove the rotating portion of the mechanical seal from the shaft. For bellows seals, this can be accomplished by simply pulling it off. On the G through HL size pumps, loosen the set screw in the set collar and remove the collar by sliding it off the end of the shaft. The C through FH size pumps do not use a set collar. Remove the seal seat from the end cap. The rotor and shaft assembly can now be removed from the pump. Take care in removing the rotor and shaft to avoid damaging the casing bushing. A soft-headed hammer may be needed to tap on the end of the shaft for removal. Inspect pump parts for wear, particularly critical parts such as the idler pin, bushings, gears, and casing. Replace any worn components. It's recommended not to reuse seals unless you've been instructed to do so by Viking Pump or your authorized Viking Pump distributor. Clean the rotor hub and casing bore. Make sure both are free of dirt or grit. Install the bushing into the casing. Bushings with lubrication grooves should be installed with the groove at the top or 12 o'clock position. Carbon graphite bushings require extreme care to avoid breaking the bushing during installation. Use a lubricant and make certain that the bushing is started straight. Use a press to completely install the bushing in one continuous motion. Starting and stopping will crack the bushing. Lubricate the inner diameter of the shaft bushing and slide the rotor shaft assembly into the casing. Using a cap screw as a guide, place the head gaskets on the head. To ensure adequate gasket sealing, make sure that the first and last gaskets placed on the head are the brown paper gaskets. The proper amount of head gaskets must be used to provide the necessary end clearance for the pump. Check your technical service manual for the standard end clearance and typical number of gaskets used for your pump size. Reinstall the head and idler gear 
ensuring proper location of the pin and crescent. The idler pin, which is offset in the pump head, must be positioned toward the equal distance between the port connections to allow proper flow of liquid through the pump. Tighten the head cap screws evenly. Use a feeler gauge to check the end clearance of the pump. If the end clearance is not correct, add or remove gaskets in order to get the proper end clearance. Repeat this process until the pump has the proper end clearance. Once the end clearance is set correctly, the pump should have no appreciable end play, but still turn freely. Install the set collar over the end of the shaft. See your technical service manual for the correct position of the set collar for your pump size and tighten the set screw. Place the spring washer followed by the spring onto the shaft. Special care should be taken when handling the mechanical seal. Do not touch the sealing faces and be sure to place them face up on the bench to prevent scratching of these highly polished surfaces. Using the provided lubricant or other compatible seal lube, coat the shaft and the inside diameter of the rubber bellows of the mechanical seal. Slide the rotary member over the shaft until it contacts the spring. Rubber bellows seals will stick to the shaft after a few minutes. Work quickly, but carefully, to make sure that the seal is in the correct position before the bellows attach to the shaft. Coat the O-ring of the seal seat with the provided lubricant or other compatible seal lube. Push the seal seat into the end cap. Place the end cap gasket on the end of the casing. Install the end cap and tighten the cap screws evenly. Your Viking Pump mechanically sealed general purpose internal gear pump is fully repaired and ready to put back into service. If you still have any questions regarding this or other Viking Pump products, please contact your local authorized Viking Pump distributor or visit us on the web at vikingpump.com. Thank you.